Brothers Company, the makers of Lux Toilet Soap, brings you the Lux Radio Theater, starring Charlton Heston and Nicole Moray in Secret of the Incas. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. Irving Cummings. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. Throughout the ages, men have been willing to sacrifice a great deal in the search for lost treasures, even their very lives. In tonight's play, Secret of the Incas, we will take you to the lofty Andes of Peru and the frantic race to find a fabulous sunburst of the ancient tribe of, In of Incas. And we have the original stars of this exciting adventure drama from Paramount Pictures, Charlton Heston and Nicole Morey. In the high Andes of Peru, the descendants of the Inca have searched for centuries for the symbol of their past glories, a fabulous golden disc encrusted with jewels once found, say the legends, the incarnation will rise again to even greater glories. There are others who search for this golden disc, but for different reasons. One of them is an American. His name is Harry Steele. It's strictly legitimate, the business that first brought me down here. Peru's a mountain country needed air transportation, and I had a plane. Nice, neat, 24-passenger job. That was the beginning of the Harry Steele Charter Airline. It ended with a sudden merger between the nice, neat, 24-passenger job and an extra tall hunk of the Andes. No plane, no income. But there are ways of making a buck, even in Cusco. If you've ever been to Peru, you've heard about Cusco. Maybe you've even landed at the airport there. You might even have seen me hanging around the waiting room talking to Bert Springer. Bert's the American agent for the airline and field manager. Hey, hurry. Yeah? Ed Morgan was looking for you. <laughs> Morgan, that makes my day complete. Let's uh, see your flight list. Well, the plane just coming in? Yeah. Give me the names of any of them that sound like tourists. Rich tourists. Mr. and Mrs. Winston from Boston. Mr. and Mrs. Richmond from yes. St. Louis. Is that it? That's it. Okay. Winston and Richmond. Oh, um, one other thing. Any private planes to do in? You know private planes don't come in here, Harry. No harm in asking, is there? The answer is always no. Yes, yeah, someday the answer might be yes. Suppose a private plane does come in. Then what? Just between you and me, Bert, I'll steal it. You arriving passengers will please their baggage in the lobby. <laughs> you know, Harry, for a moment, I almost believed you. Yeah, so did I. Where'd uh, Morgan say it'd be? At El Prado. You ought to stay away from that crook. Why? He makes me feel honest. Well, here come my pigeons. I'll see you, Bert. Okay. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Winston. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Richmond. Oh, Edgar, somebody's staging us. I am, madam. Welcome to Cusco City of Light. I'm Harry Steele. The airlines asked me to guide you around the city. One hundred soles a day, each. So maybe the airline hadn't asked me to take over. Nobody ever bothered to check out. I heard of the Winstons and the Richmonds into a taxi and delivered them to the hotel. After that, I dropped by Ed Morgan's hangout, El Prado. Spotted a huge hulk of a man bending over the billiard table in the pool. Morgan. Ah, I've been looking for you, Harry. Yes, so I heard. I got a deal for you. How much? Why don't you ask what it's about first? Details come later. How much? I don't know. It's a girl. Hungarian or Romanian, I'd say, from her name. She needs help. What kind? She'll tell you. She gets them tonight from a Paz, coming by truck. Hmm. People don't ride in trucks unless they're trying to get past the border inspection. That's right. Well, I'll be seeing you. Oh, uh, Harry, uh, one, one more thing. Mm -hmm. I thought there might be something else. I uh, hear the archaeological museum just put up a new exhibit, a big stone carving. Inca. Mm -hmm. That's what you heard, huh? Heard an Indian found the carving with a... Uh, 
corner missing from it. Anything else? Had the Indian sold the missing piece to an American. I heard it might be the key to the uh, hidden Inca treasure. You get good ears, Morgan. But I just thought I'd mention it in case you uh, had something to tell me. No, can't think of a thing. Except uh, be seeing you. Out, I can feel Morgan's eyes boring into my shoulder blades. Then, just as I reach the patio door, the... I jerked the knife out of the door and swung around. There's nobody in sight, so I turned and headed back for the pool room. Morgan saw me coming, the knife in my hand. There ain't no rough stuff now, Harry. Funny thing just happened to me. You see this knife? Throw it on the floor. Harry. Who does it belong to? Not me. Who does it belong to? Uh, a friend of mine. That's what I thought. You tell your friend he needs a little practice. His aim is bad. Well, that's why I use aim, Harry. <laughs> you don't figure I really meant anything serious. Is this a friendly hint? Yeah. Next time you try hinting to me, Morgan, you better hire a gra guy that throws a straight blade, because if he doesn't, I'm coming after you. Now, you're quite a guy, aren't you, Buster? Big, good-looking, figure you got everything. You know, I was like you once. I came down here to teach him the score. A quick million, and then home. Uh, Fourteen years I've been waiting for a line on that Inca treasure. Uh -huh. You waited till you're old and fat and tired, didn't you? Even if you make that million now, you're too used up to spend it. Harry, you got that stone, the missing piece that says where the treasure is buried. You got it, you know where it is, and you need a partner. Mm, not you, Morgan. Listen to me, Harry. I told you I'm not interested, Morgan. By the time I got back to the hotel, my party of tourists was unpacked, washed up, and panting to see the sights of Cusco. I gave him a quick whirl through the shops around the plaza, a hike through the university. For the evening show, I brought him back to the main dining room of the Hotel de Turistas. Me, I headed for the bar. Oh, Mr. Steele. Mr. Steele. Yeah. Something, Mrs. Winston? My husband isn't feeling well. I just sent him up to the room. Do you think a doctor might... No, he doesn't need one. Just tell him to take it easy. Stop prancing around the dance floor at this altitude. Yes. Cusco is over two miles high, isn't it? It is. Mr. Steele. Just call me Harry. Good. The altitude doesn't affect you, does it? I'm used to it. Good again. The uh, orchestra is playing a rumba, Harry. Mm -hmm. I take my excitement in tall glasses. You know, you're quite an enigma. All afternoon, I've wondered why a man seemingly as capable as you... ...buries himself in this half-forgotten corner of the world. A lot of people have asked me that, Miss Winston. Women? Yeah. You see, I, I came down here with an airplane. And it and smashed I... against a mountain. You've been asking around, huh? Well, what was left of the plane paid my way out of the hospital, but I owe the Peruvian Mining and Transport Company 8,000 soles for gasoline and hangar space. Till I can pay it, they take a dim view of me getting an exit visa. An exit visa? Yeah. Maybe you'd like to lend me the money? Maybe you'd like to show me some nightlife? With Mr. and Mrs. Richmond. Mm, that's up to you. Uh, there's not much to see. What there is, you'll find at a place called El Prado. Ask for Ed Morgan. He'll take care of you. Thanks for all your trouble, Mr. Steele. We'll see you in the morning. Okay. Manuel. Si, senor. Another double. The lady called you Mr. Steele. Would you be Mr. Harry Steele? That's right. I don't remember seeing you around. You haven't. I arrived tonight from La Paz by train. Oh, yeah. Ed Morgan sent you. Yes. Please, there is somewhere we can talk alone. Yeah? Come on. Manuel, skip the drink. Hey, you've got seats somewhere in this patio. It is no matter. Mr. Steele, I am Elena Antonescu. Romanian? Yes, a refugee. How'd you get out? Under the fence? In a way. 
From Europe, I go to La Paz, and in La Paz, I hear that Mr. A. Morgan in Cusco can help me. Now, Mr. Morgan said it might be Mr. Steele. Call me Harry. Thank you. Just, uh, what's this help to be? I want to get into the United States. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you ask me something easy, like a, a nice little murder or a boatload of penis? Or... All I wish from you is to go north. If I can get even to Mexico, I will be that much closer to the United States. Yeah. No, uh, no passport, no papers. None. Besides uh, wanting to come to Cusco, any particular reason why you left La Paz? The police. No visible means of support. They need glasses. Please, without your help, I'm in serious trouble. Now, how much money have you got? Well, about fifty dollars. You're still in trouble. But it's all the money I have. That's not money. That's tips. I'm sorry, but the wheels just don't turn for fifty bucks. I see. Oh, look. I've seen too many women cry before. It won't work. Maybe if you try somebody else. There is nobody else. It's no use. You come after me. Who oh, will? The Romanian Council. He flew to La Paz to get me. Oh, that's, that's a different story. Huh? It wasn't because of the police in La Paz. You fight. never leave behind the Iron Curtain. You don't know what it's like. And they do anything to get a refugee back. They'll follow me here. Well, that still gives you a couple of days to figure something out. The next passenger flight isn't due till Friday. <laughs> I didn't tell you that the Romanian Council flight his own plane. No, you didn't. Flies his own. A big plane or a little one? I don't know. Why? Mm. Kind of a hobby of mine, planes. He's uh, in the past. Yes. Well, what's his name? Anton Marco. Huh? Here, maybe you can use this. What is it? Key to my hotel room. Oh, no, now, I... look, you've got to stay undercover. The room's all yours while I work out some details. Details? Yeah. I'll tell you about them later. One of the details was a phone call I had to make. Long-distance call across the national boundary to La Paz, Bolivia. It was after midnight when I finally made the connection. Bueno? 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 Senor Anton Marco, por favor. Yo soy el señor Marco. Oh, hablo usted inglés, señor Marco. Yes. Who is this? My name is Steele. Harry Steele, Mr. Marco. It was a very interesting phone call, you might say. Very rewarding. Next morning, I had him send breakfast up to the girl in room 620. After that... Mostly to pass the time, I escorted my tourists, uh, Winston's and Richmond's, through the great cathedral and the museum. The curator opened the vault for him, brought out his rarest exhibits. This was found in a tomb just outside Cusco. And now, our most cherished and most valuable relic. Oh, a golden sunburst. Set with the finest jewels of the Inca Empire. How do we know they're the finest, Senor Fernandez? How about that sunburst that was stolen from the Temple of the Sun 400 years ago? Well, we only know that by reputation. Perhaps it's merely a legend. Ah, pretty specific for a legend. 30 pounds of pure gold set with 119 diamonds and 243 other jewels. And no one knows where it is now? No. You sure, Harry? Morgan. When did you develop a taste for museums? Just now. I want to talk to you, Harry. Wait a minute. Listen. Harry, I'm losing my patience. <laughs> Harry, will you listen? I am listening to the most beautiful sound in the world. I got to the airport just as the plane taxied up the strip. Single engine job. Just right. Welcome to Cusco, City of Light, Mr. Marco. You are the man who telephoned me? Harry Steele's the name. And the young lady we talked about? I have her ready and waiting. Splendid. 
And where? Before we get to that, Mr. Marcoux, suppose we talk about uh, bangos, slotis, whatever you use in Romania. Oh, your money. I have it here in this envelope. Just better call me Harry. Yeah. Oh, dear. Okay, now we're going to talk to Bert Springer. Bring him. Uh, the airport manager. I thought you might like to order a full load of gasoline in case uh, flying out of here in a hurry, maybe? Oh, you are a man after my own kind, Mr. Steele. I am, huh? Took Marco to the hotel, checked him in, and told him he could meet his young lady in the bar in ten minutes. Then I went upstairs and broke the news to Miss Antonescu. It wasn't easy. I've never seen such a look of terror come into a woman's eyes. Just, just for money? No. For Marcou's plane. I want that plane so bad I can taste it. I had to use you as a bait to get Marcou to fly it up here. And you expect him to give you his own plane? <laughs> no. I'll get it, but I need your help. Ah, then you are not ready to turn me over, Marco. I never said I was going to. And when I fly out of here, you go with me. Mexico? Well, let's uh, talk about that when we get the plane. How? All we need are the keys. That's your job. He's waiting for us in the bar? Right now. Then the sooner the better, Mrs. Steele. Swell. Oh, um, Miss Hendon, ask you. Yes? Call me Harry. <laughs> Well, the gentleman wants another drink, pronto. Si, sí, senor, pronto. And what about you, Mr. Steele? And our lovely companion. Okay, three drinks, Manuel. Muy bien, senor. That is seven each. And if I agree to return with you... This chief for the chanclesh. Because I prefer to speak English. Uh, the man, senor Steele. Yeah. Uh, the drinks, senor, you want them as before? Exactly the same. One glass with double scotch, two glasses, plain soda, and iced tea. But your friend, senor, so much whiskey at this altitude, it goes to the air very bad. No, really? Doris Sabinitz? Elena. Doris Sabinitz? Perhaps. Perhaps what? We are not talking to you, Mr. Steele. Elena, Dr. Novenitz Comine. Dr. Novenitz Comine? Oh, yeah, we got that part. What else? Dr. Novenitz Comine? Mr. Steele. Yeah, right now. The keys are in his hip pocket. I'll put you in the patio. And well, senor. Maybe you'd better help uh, Senor Marcou to his room. Uh-huh. Yeah, you know how it is. Too much whiskey at this altitude, it goes to the head very bad. Si, sí, very bad, Senor. Here, I found him. Keys? In his pocket, I think. Good girl, let's see him. What about our luggage? I'll send a boy up for it. Let's have the keys. At the right time, Harry. Huh? When we are in the plane. Oh, well, that's the way it's going to be. Just when I thought you were beginning to trust me, Miss Andonescu. Call me Elena. Elena and I both needed Marcou's plane, but for different reasons. Timing was everything. We... Reached the airfield at exactly midnight. That's when the lights in the administration building turn off. The only other light was in the hangar. Marcus' plane was right outside at the head of the runway. Made a wide circle around the hangar just to be sure of everything. Harry. Yeah, soldiers. They're right inside the hangar. Uh, that must be their jeep alongside Marcus' plane. Then it's impossible. Uh, maybe not. Uh, I think I can get rid of them. You have a gun? <laughs> no. Here's what we do. You start moving toward the plane. Keep to the north side of the hangar so they won't see you. And when the soldiers run out of the hangar, you beat it to the plane, understand? I think so. All right. 
unlock the plane, get inside, and unlock the instrument panel. Now, about that time, I'll be along. You sure? No. I'll start walking toward that plane. I watched him start, then I circled back toward the administration building. Right outside the big glass window of the waiting room, there was a little strip of dark. That's where I found the rock. Now was my chance, for the jeep was racing toward the administration building. coming up at us is all part of my itinerary. You said you'd take me to Mexico. I didn't say when. Meanwhile, uh, maybe you've heard of Machu Picchu. No. It's an ancient city of the Incas. You'll see it in a few hours. Why do you want to go to this place? It's out of the high rent district. Okay, end of the line. I'm not going with you. Fine. You wouldn't get far hiking through the jungle in those high French heels and... When will you be back? Oh, two or three days. You won't be lonely. There's plenty of wildlife to keep you company. Harry. Yeah? I think in my luggage I have walking shoes. I sat down almost in the bank of the Urubamba River. Marco's plane had a collapsible rubber lifeboat, which we used as a ferry. After that, came the jungle. Harry. Yeah. Where are you from? Oh, look, don't waste your energy on chit-chat. Where, Harry? California. Ah, oh, I know all about California. Everything. All the apples come from there. Apples? Yeah, sure, sure. You see, I know everything about the United States. I want to go there to live, so I study and read all about it. Ask me anything, Harry, and I can tell you. Uh, who cut down the cherry tree? Abraham Lincoln. I didn't think you'd know. Please, I can breathe. That's the altitude. Oh. Sit down for a minute. It's cold. The altitude. The altitude, the altitude. Might as well get used to it. Machu Picchu's still higher. You have friends there? <laughs> I hope not. Nobody goes there. It's just ruins. Huge city of stone built in a mountaintop. The Inca has left it. It was lost for a thousand years. A city of stone. And... That piece of stone which you carry, is it from that city? What piece of stone? In your coat pocket. Twice I have seen you take it out and look at it like... like a man looks at a woman when they are in love. Maybe this sort of look? No, you cannot pretend it. Maybe this sort of kiss? Why did you do that? 
Maybe to change the subject. Come on, on your feet. Let's move it. It was late afternoon when we reached the crest of the mountain. We came to a precipice with a sheer drop of thousands of feet. Below us was a mist of fog. Then, slowly, here and there, through the fog, we made out solid forms. Towers of stone. Huge, gigantic, unbelievable towers of stone. Machu Picchu. It is. How can anyone describe it? A dream. Uh-huh. And this one's going to come true. something else. Down there at the foot of the ruins. You see him? Yes, Dan. On me, Tyler. That means there's somebody else here to do some digging. Looks like some sort of an archaeological expedition. Well, we'd better start thinking up a good story for ourselves. We reached the floor of the valley and started toward the tents. It was a good-sized camp. Beyond, coming down from the ruins, was a long procession of Indians. That's where the music was coming from. We walked almost into the center of the camp before we spotted one of the archaeologists. He was a tall, good-looking guy. Stared at us as if we were some sort of mirage. Hello there. Dr. Livingston, I presume. Oh, Morehead is my name. We don't have a Livingston with our expedition. Oh, I see a joke. <laughs> My name's Steele, Harry Steele. This is Miss Selena Antonescu. Pleasure, Miss Antonescu. Uh, may I ask how in the world you two happen Our to be... Our plane was forced down. Mr. Steele is my pilot. Yeah, we ran out of gas, made a landing about ten miles back. Some natives told us you were up here. We hoped you might have gasoline. Oh, I'm sorry, we have no use for it, I'm afraid. There is gasoline at Tampu, Dr. Moore. Tampu, of course. Uh, Miss Antonescu, uh, Mr. Steele, may I present Colonel Cardoza? How do you do? How do you do? I am honored. Well, I'm in charge of this expedition. It's Colonel Cardoza who's the final authority. The Colonel represents the Peruvian government and sees to it that we don't appropriate any valuable souvenirs. Uh, found anything that fits that description? And this afternoon, Mr. Steele, in one of the tombs, we found the mummy of the Mamacuna. The Mamacuna? The high priestess of Machu Picchu. It is her mummy which the Indians are now bringing down into the camp. It requires great ceremony. Mr. Steele, about your gasoline problem. Oh, yeah, the gasoline. I'll short wave to Tampu, that's our supply base, and ask them to send up some by fuel by pack train. Oh, you uh, have a short wave, sir. Huh? Well, naturally. We're very much in touch with civilization up here. Really? Well, it's comforting to know, isn't it? From the way both Colonel Cardoza and Dr. Moorhead had eyed Miss Elena Antonescu, I wasn't too worried about them being in a sweat to get the gasoline up to us, but that uh, shortwave radio... We ate dinner around the campfire, and afterwards, Dr. Moorhead trotted out some of the trinkets they'd found in the ruins. Pottery, necklaces, knives. The whole show was the for Elena's benefit. Was beginning to disappear when these objects were made. We believe that the finest specimens are still to be found somewhere in the ruins above us. In uh, Manco's tomb, maybe? You know quite a bit about the Inca history, Mr. Steele. Well, Manco was a great prince, wasn't he? Yes. We think we have located his tomb. Uh, we hope to enter it within a day or two. Uh, you think you'll find the sunburst? You have heard about that too, eh? Hasn't everybody? I haven't. What is this sunburst? A legend, Miss Antonescu. Supposedly, a great golden plate studded with diamonds and other jewels. The story goes that it was the symbol of Inca power, that it was stolen from the Temple of the Sun and hidden in Manco's tomb. That if this golden sunburst can be found, the Inca nation will rise again to even greater power. Well, this is what the Indians believe. Even though they're here in your camp? And they, above all, they uh, say there is a map carved in stone, a key that will lead its owner to the great sunburst. A map carved in stone? How big would this stone be? Oh, see what you've started, Mr. Steele. In another moment, we'll be discussing the positive reality of ghosts. <laughs> it's not a bad idea, why don't we? 
Later, I got the jump of the competition. I took Elena to the special tent that Moorhead had put up for her. Harry, I know why you want her to come here. I figured you did. Suppose I tell Moorhead or Cato. Uh, you won't. Not unless you want to get sent back to Romania for your trouble. You're the uh, only way out of Peru is with me. You forget something, Harry. The radio. What about it? All they must do is contact any station. They will hear about it. That we stole, stole the Marcos pen. Uh, I don't know. Your cardos have tried to use the shortwave just a little while ago. Seems it was out of order. Mm -hmm. You take care of everything, don't you, Harry? Everything. You just relax and have sweet dreams. Yes. Good night. Good night. Harry. Yeah? Today, while we were climbing the mountain, we stopped and you kissed me. I did. You remember it, Harry. Why did you do it? I haven't the faintest idea. Good night. Next day, Moorhead and Cardoza invited us to go with them into the tunnel the diggers were driving under one of the temples. Moorhead called one of the Indians over to us. Pastor Kutak. I want you to meet some new friends. Mr. Antonescu and Mr. Steele. Roger Kutek is pure Inca, descendant of the old princess, in charge of our digging. The Indian gave me a cold stare and then spat in the ground. Iskilia, Bruno, Kutek. Tell him I understand Keshua very well. Oh? Then I must apologize. Why? What did he say? He said I have a gray face. The Indians say that for someone not to be trusted. Liar, cheat, even a thief. What do you think, Dr. Mohan? Please, this, this is most embarrassing. But then everyone's nerves are so keyed up. You see, according to our calculations, Marco's tomb is directly ahead of us. We may break through at any moment. They didn't break through, not that day or the next. The air in the tunnel was so heavy with dust, Elena and I spent most of our time outside. The third afternoon, I wandered back to my tent to stretch out for a while. As I lifted the tent flap, I saw a pair of boots on my bed. Come in. Don't be bashful. Morgan. How did you find me? Logic, my boy. You stole Marcus' plane, but it never turned up at any of the airfields within range of your gas supply. So I figured you hadn't tried to go very far. Maybe just far enough to be near the Inca treasure. Hasn't been found yet. But soon? I think they're on the track of Manco's too. And the sunburst, it'll be there. That's what it says in the stone. And you still got the stone. What do you think? Hand it over, Harry. <laughs> no. Harry, maybe I should remind you that we're in business together, and it's big business. We just had a meeting, and we selected a new chairman of the board. These six votes are for me. And the little man with the big gun wins. The stone, Harry. It's in my pocket. All right, take it out. Throw it over here on the bed. <laughs> ah, that's nice, Harry. That's real nice. Well, your feelings are good. What about me? What's our deal? 50-50. We get the sunburst and we get out of here together. When we get back to civilization, we split everything. <laughs> you trust me, don't you, Harry? Oh, sure, completely. What about the girl? I like girls. This one, she could wind up with all I've got if she works at it. You crumb. Mr. Steele. Pitch a good day. Duck that gun. Okay, okay. Mr. Steele, is Pacachutek, sir? Yeah, what is it? Dr. Moorhead and Colonel Cardoza ask you to come to the tunnel. Monko's tomb has been found. All right, I'll be there. Thank you. <laughs> Well, don't look so unhappy, Harry. That's good news. It's the best. And I'm right here to share it with you. Now, shut up. <laughs> I 
figured I'd have to talk fast, alibi the arrival of Morgan at Machu Picchu, so I told Moorhead and Cardoza that just before the plane crash, I'd managed to send out a radio call, and Morgan had picked it up and had come searching for us. But in their excitement, they hardly listened to my explanation. Gentlemen, this is the most important day of my life. Think of it. The tomb of Manco found. A great event, yes. I suggest we all have a drink on this. Right now, but the tomb is... We right... breached the wall, but we won't explore the interior until tomorrow. Tomorrow? Yes. Achakutek has requested a delay in order that his people may perform the required ceremonies. Now we must have ceremonies? Of course. This is an event of great religious importance to the Incas. <laughs> That's no reason for us to put off our own celebration. No, no. Uh, Mr. Steele, Mr. Morgan, if you would care to join us. Yes, yes, count us in. Yeah. Oh, uh, by the way, Dr. Morehead, I've been thinking of doing a little hunting up here. You mind uh, lending me a rifle? Oh, I'm afraid there's no game up at this altitude. We're too high. Well, I might be lucky. I'll find something to shoot at. No, we do not have any firearms, Mr. Steele. Uh, there is no use for them. Ah, that's a real disappointment, isn't it, Harry? Not a single gun in camp. Well, well. Uh... Morgan never let me out of his sight. At dinner, I managed only a few words to Elena. The whole valley glowed that night with the flare of a hundred torches. The Indians were streaming in from all sides. From somewhere up the ruined towers of Machu Picchu, we could hear their music. Elena and Morad went up to watch the sun. You are a very quiet man, Doctor. You make me feel comfortable. And yet there's so much I'd like to tell you. I'm listening. But you probably find it difficult to understand the excitement occasioned by archaeological findings, but I, I believe the science of archaeology reached its very peak in Egypt, in the Valley of the Kings. The tomb of King Tutankhamun. An enormous room lined with gold, a gold sarcophagus. Fabulous jewels, rich carvings, alabaster, jade. When they lifted the fantastic sheath of gold that covered the king, I found the most precious thing of all. A single flower on his breast. Put there by his wife. 4,000 years ago. Why do you tell me this, Dr. Moray? I'm trying to tell you that I love you. Oh. And I would like you to be my wife. But you don't know me. Elena. You know nothing about what me. What is there to know? For two years, I've tried to get to the United States. This is only Peru, and... And I have had to do many unhappy things just to get here. None of that matters, Elena. Let me take you to the United States as my wife. California. Anywhere you like. To California, where they have all the apples. <laughs> Aren't you thinking of oranges? Am I? Yes. California is famous for oranges. <laughs> I see. Dr. Amore, there is something I must know, something important. Yes. Who cut down the cherry tree? My... George Washington, of course. But why does it matter? He lied to me, he lied to me even about that. You lie even about George Washington and Abraham Lincoln. You cannot tell the truth. I can never trust you. You can't trust the doc, is that it? Yes. To marry me. <laughs> it is not funny. Yeah, I guess it isn't. It, it's just all wrong. A girl like you, you're made for somebody like me, and you know it. We go together like fire and smoke. No, never. I can't do without you. You know why? In my country, when you want to know what kind of man a boy will be, you look at his father. Yes. And this friend of yours, this Morgan... He could be your father. Morgan, that thieving lump of blubber? Yes, Harry, I can see him in your eyes. The way you think, the way you talk. One day you will not be Harry anymore, you will be him. I'm too tall to make a good Morgan. For a tall man, you are the smallest man I ever met. I went 
went back to my tent, found Morgan holding the piece of Inca stone under the oil lamp and muttering to himself. It doesn't make sense. The carving on this stone doesn't look like anything I've ever seen before. Have you seen a mirror? A mirror? Yeah, that's what one of those circles is supposed to be. Now, you can read it like a book, huh? Like a book. Yeah, it looks like I'm going to have to depend on you after all, doesn't it? Weren't you planning to? Partners, aren't we? Oh, sure, sure. <laughs> oh, man, we wish we could get into that tomb tonight. You know, for 14 years, I've been dreaming about that sunburst all of gold and jewels. And now it's almost in my hands. <laughs> It'll be ours, Harry, ours. We'll split 50-50, a diamond for you and a diamond for me. How about it, Harry, huh? Keep talking. One million dollars. It's worth that, at least. <laughs> you know, it makes me shake just thinking about this. Yeah, look at my hands. I can't hold them still. <laughs> you see, Harry? I see, yeah. Uh, oh, what's the matter with you, Harry? Don't stare at me like that. Harry, what in blazes are you looking at? What do you see? Me, Morgan. Only me. Next morning, we all entered the tunnel together. Moorhead, Cardoza, Pescutek, Elena, Morgan, and me. The beam of Morad's flashlight showed a hole about the size of a man's head broken into the wall of the tomb. First, it had to be made bigger. How do they know this is Malcolm's tomb? By research, Miss Antonescu. At least we're reasonably sure. You mean you're not positive it might turn out to be a dud? No archaeological find is a dud, Mr. Morgan. Ah, there we are. Colonel Cardoza? A Takutek, put on your dust masks. Hey, what about us? Only members of the expedition will be allowed to enter the tomb. The rest of you must wait here. I crawled through the hole, then in a moment we saw Morad's flashlight sweeping the interior. Morgan started to shake again. Sweat rolled down his cheeks. Lena? She just stood there watching the two of us with an odd look. Then we heard a Takutek yell. Oh, what does he say? Well, what does he say? It's Manco's tomb. Oh, great, great. He was not fool. Oh, talk in English, you fool. It's about the sunburst. Well, <laughs> have they found it? <laughs> Harry, have they found it? Yeah. It's made out of stone. And Cardoza had never believed in a golden sunburst, so they weren't disappointed. They'd found Mago's tomb, his mummy, and enough pottery and knickknacks to keep him busy for weeks. But the Indians in the camp, they took the news hard. There was no music that night, only silence and a cold wind. It's very sad for them, is it not? Oh, I didn't see her. It is like when one has believed in something of somebody, and they learn it is hopeless. Ah. Only the Indians will believe again. That's kutek has been telling them the sunburst will be found somewhere, sometime. And you, Harry, will you go on looking? Ah. Sunburst would have been nice, but I've found something to take its place. But, Harry... No, you haven't found me. Huh? More head after all. I'll give him my congratulations just in case I don't see him again. You're leaving? Yeah, tonight. I went back to the tent. Morgan and I talked for a while and we turned in. When I heard him snoring, I slipped out of bed and rummaged through his jacket. Found the stone all right, one of the pockets. Ten minutes later, I crawled through the opening into Manco's tomb. Just as I'd expected, Morehead and Cardoza had left their equipment in the tomb. Flashlights, crowbars, carrying sacks. Mummy of Manco was in the center of the room. At the far end was a great stone throne, and above it, the stone sunburst. I played the flashlight on the sunburst. 
was highly polished stone and shot back the light at me like a mirror. A mirror. The stone map showed the carving of a mirror. I turned to see where the rays reflected by the sunburst would focus in the opposite wall. It... Yes, they pinpointed just one particular slab of stone. I grabbed one of the crowbars. Slab started to move, and then picked up the flashlight and aimed it at the opening. Golden sunburst, hundreds of jewels flashing red and green and blue and white and yellow. Lift it out, Harry. More. I thought I was asleep at you. I'm going to give you a chance to do my work for me. I'm not working for you. Don't give me an argument, buddy boy, because I got six good answers right here staring you in the face. Yeah, you should have taken the gun, too, Harry. All right, now lift down that soundburst. All right. Now slip it into this gun, I said. I guess you win, Morgan. You ever had any doubts about this? I got it! Give me that gunny sack. Give that to me. Thanks, Harry. I must have been out for some time. When I finally came to, Morgan was gone and his sun burst with him. I crawled out of the tomb and ran to the mouth of the tunnel. The whole camp was awake. Indians with lighted torches were running toward the hills. Two shots from the direction of the trail over the mountain peak. Thanks for the clue, Morgan. Shelf of rock hanging out over sheer space, empty black space. That was your last bullet, Morgan. Number six. Morgan. Morgan. Harry. Harry. Hold me up, Harry. It's my knees. They just buckled under me. It's the altitude. I want that sunburst, Morgan. I'm an old man, Harry. There's nothing left. Nothing. <laughs> you should have seen me in the old days, Harry. I was rugged then. Give me the sunburst. No. No, it's mine. It's mine. Why did you bring the sunburst back to us? Well, in the first place, I didn't take it. All I did was find it and then get it away from Morgan. Speaking for the government of Peru, Mr. Steele, I wish that there were some way in which we might show our appreciation. You can. You can tell me where I'll find Miss Antonescu. I believe she's in her tent. Thanks. But there uh, might be one other thing, Colonel. N name it, sir. Well, uh, speaking for the government of Peru, maybe you might arrange an exit visa on my passport. It shall be done. Thank you. Thank you.